Welcome to Films and Stuff with your hosts, Pete Mitchell and Ethan Hunt. Welcome to the Films and Stuff debate. The idea is super simple. Ethan and I pose a simple statement or topic about which we feel needs a short, semi-nuanced discussion. Then Pete and I will randomly assign ourselves either the pro or anti side of the statement. We then each get up to four minutes of uninterrupted time to argue our points. After their opening round, Ethan and I get a three-minute rebuttal each, which is followed by a one-minute closing statement. And then it's up to you, the listener, to decide who is the rightful winner. Vote for us on Twitter, leave a comment on our YouTube channel, and let us know who you think won. And now, on to our debate. Bring it on. Pete, welcome back. Films and Stuff Debate Club. How are you today? I'm great, Ethan. How are you? Everything is exceptionally good today. And that's because Top Gun Maverick has finally, finally, finally announced a specific date when it's going to be released in Dubai. I have marked my calendar, booked my tickets for May 26. I am so excited. I, too, will be watching the movie, I think, also on the 26th, because I believe it's released the same day here. Ah, this is so exciting. I can't believe it's finally here. It's been years since years I've been making literally after, years. Yes. Numerous delays. They finally dropped a date and now it's so close. I don't think they're going to delay it again. They cannot. Uh, uh, when I went online to book my tickets, actually, uh, there is an extended trailer available and right. I made the mistake of clicking on it. You know, I hate to watch trailers of films that I'm really looking forward to. I probably watched, I think it's like a two-minute trailer. I probably watched the first 30 seconds and I had to stop because it was so good. One, I was like overexciting myself. And two, I was starting to get a few little spoilers that I did not want. Uh, so I had to turn it off. And I'm, I'm really kind of regretful that I even went down that rabbit hole to begin with. Um, but it looks, I have to say, touch wood, uh, it looks exceptional. I'm very excited. I saw the full trailer. I couldn't stop myself. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and it did excite me greatly. It did excite me greatly. There were some great visuals. I mean, you must have seen the, oh, in the yeah. 30 seconds you saw, oh, you must yeah. have seen the jets and some oh, of the flying. Yeah. It looks fantastic, right? And it's honestly, been, it, yeah. I mean, it's been It looks like a recruiting video for the U.S. Does. Navy, right? It, it really looks does. so good. It and, does. This is, you know, the original Top Gun, 1986. Can yeah, you believe can it? Can you believe it? That's crazy. Nearly so that's, 40 years ago, right? Yes. 36 years ago. Yes. And, and it made me think of what Tom Cruise has been in since that time. Because, I mean, 1986, this was, this was the biggest movie, right, in the world. I mean, iconic film. Pro I don't know if it was a top grossing film, but it must have been among the highest grossing films that year. And Tom Cruise has been with us as a undisputed A-list actor ever since then. But I don't know if he's actually lived up to his promise. And that is our debate topic of the day. Yes, that's right. So the debate topic or debate statement, let's yes. put it that way, yes, is that Tom Cruise should fire his agent Ouch. because his agent has failed him. Ouch. Ethan, I believe you are for that, <laughs> yeah. and I am against that. That's right. Yes. I, Ethan, believe that Tom Cruise's agent should be fired for agency malpractice. And this is my <laughs> opening statement of why. All right, let's get started. Ding, let's get ding. started. Ding, ding. Top Gun premiered 1986. It starred Tom Cruise, Tim Robbins, Kelly McGillis, Val Kimmer, directed by Tony Scott. Since that time, Tom Cruise has done approximately 30 additional films. 
Can you name them? No. The reason is they are all one-off, 120-minute kind of action-y dramas, none of which is bad. In fact, most are exceptionally good, but they don't give Tom Cruise a clear character. He is still known as Maverick as much as almost anyone else. Let's go backwards. Edge of Tomorrow, Oblivion, one Jack Reacher film, Rock of Ages, Night and Day, Valkyrie, Tropic Thunder, Lions for Lambs, War of the Worlds, Collateral, Last Samurai, Minority Report, Vanilla Sky, Magnolia, Eyes Wide Shut, which I think was rated X, Jerry Maguire, Interview of the Vampire, The Firm, A Few Good Men, which was iconic, Far and Away, Days of Thunder, Born on the Fourth of July, Rain Man, Cocktail, Color of Money. The only thing I'm leaving out is Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible is, in those 35 plus years, kind of the only franchise and the only film that has had or has deserved a sequel. And for Tom Cruise being an undisputed year in and year out A-list actor, globally known around the world, he has nothing that has approached a billion dollar film and that's because he is always in these one-off very good drama history action thrillers with a little bit of comedy but nothing that's really put his stamp on hollywood or on cinema for the long term thank you pete Wow, very well done. I like it. Uh, you've made some very, very nice comments and criticisms. Sorry, I I need a second here to compose myself because I'm uh, you're I'm, crying, I'm blown away. You're crying. It, it's beautiful. <laughs> do you rest your case? Right. Do you want Do you want me to win on summary judgment? Is that it? No, 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 no. Come on, I, I would be doing Tom Cruise and his agent a disservice if I didn't even give it a try. <laughs> yeah, your clients are depending on you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And speaking of which, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, and yes, I'm still going with the trial jury theme, even though this is still a debate and not a trial. <laughs> I don't believe that Tom Cruise should be firing his agent, the honorable, the right honorable Paula Wagner. In fact, if anything, I should. I think he should be promoting his agent. I don't know to what. But I still think she doesn't get enough credit. Yes, Tom Cruise isn't super into franchise movies, with the exception of perhaps the Mission Impossible movies. He could have done it with Jack Reacher, but he didn't. But that's because Tom Cruise isn't the type of actor who's interested in limiting himself. He doesn't want to be known for a franchise. He wants to be known for being a great actor who's willing to push the limits of his acting and physical abilities. Tom Cruise, ladies and gentlemen, isn't interested in franchise because he is a one-man franchise by himself. What is an agent's job? An agent's job is to make sure that A, his, his or her client is getting job, uh, continuously being offered movie roles. So tick, Tom Cruise is still continually appearing in films. B, it's to make sure that her uh, client is staying relevant in the public eye. Double tick, I don't think anyone on earth would argue that Tom Cruise is not a relevant actor even as he approaches 60. C, that while being in that public eye, he stays in good graces. Triple tick, because I think everyone would agree that Tom Cruise is a very personable, affable actor who's relatively grounded and down to earth, at least in the public's eye. And even being a Scientologist, that has never marred him. 
no one has really slung mud on Tom Cruise about it being a Scientologist, even though there have been countless other Hollywood celebrities who are have that kind of uh, mud slung onto them. And with the exception of one tirade that we caught, that was caught on camera during the Mission Impossible fil- filmings uh, during the COVID pandemic, the guy is as good as apple pie. He's a nice, decent guy. And I understand that, you know, you expect him to be in franchises and that his movie should be making billions of dollars. Let's not forget that in his 40 years of acting, Tom Cruise's films have generated $10 billion of sales globally. No mean feat. And he hasn't done many film roles where he's like played a small cameo. These are roles where he's more or less been an, uh, the principal actor. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I think Paula Wagner has done a fantastic job of making sure that Tom Cruise is the person we think of when we think of a role that requires dedication to the craft. And I rest my case. I don't think you rest your case because I have a rebuttal and I'm sure you want a counter rebuttal. But (laughs) you make very good points, Pete, about what is the role of an agent. But I would argue that the role of an agent, especially when you have a commodity like Tom Cruise, is not just to make sure that they have jobs. I mean, if you have an actor with a short shelf life, say a comedian, say someone who's kind of gimmicky, you know, so for example, someone like Jim Carrey or uh, David Green, you know, someone who's just caught lightning in a bottle. Your job is to make sure as an agent that they have work. When you have Tom Cruise, who as of 1986 was already well-respected and an A-list bankable actor in Hollywood, you have your choice of projects, not just your choice of projects. You can actually create projects bespoke to you. And I ask you, what has Tom Cruise taken on that is a good decision in any particular year? He was not in, let's just take a random year, 2013, okay? In 2013, Tom Cruise appeared in, pause for dramatic effect, Oblivion. He was in Jack Reacher in 2012. He's an Edge of Tomorrow in 2014. So let's just take that as a reference, okay? In 2012, he was not in Argo. That was directed by Ben Affleck, which means Ben Affleck created the story that he starred in and potentially could have given him an Academy Award. He was not in Django Unchained, Quentin Tarantino, Jamie Foxx. In 2014, he was not in American Sniper, directed by Clint Eastwood, starring Bradley Cooper, that could have been an Academy Award-winning film. He was not in Nightcrawler, that gave Jake Gyllenhaal supreme credit for his acting ability. Instead, he was in Edge of Tomorrow. 2013, he was not in Captain Phillips, starring Tom Hanks potentially Academy Award winning. He was not in Great Gatsby, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Again, highly, highly successful. He was not in American Hustle. Remember, with Christian Bale, Amy Adams, Bradley Cooper, Jennifer Lawrence. It seems, though, time and time again, the agent of Tom Cruise has given him something that was kind of low-hanging fruit. Edge of Tomorrow is a film that would always be made, whether it starred Tom Cruise or someone else. It would always have someone like Emily Blunt playing opposite of the male lead. It would have always been a successful action-adventure sci-fi movie. Same thing with Oblivion, which is utterly forgettable storyline. Same thing with Jack Reacher, which has been remade and is now on Amazon, I think. 
Same thing with Night and Day, where he st- starred opposite Cameron Diaz, Valkyrie. So my problem with the agent of Tom Cruise is that she kept her client employed. And by virtue of being the amazing Tom Cruise, all of these quite decent scripts with quite significant budgets were quite successful in the box office. But none of them is going to be put in a time capsule to represent the very best of cinema, the very best of Hollywood, or the very best of Tom Cruise. The very best of Tom Cruise is way back in 2000 or 1985, 1986, 1987, 1988 with Rain Man. So what has Tom Cruise done since then that justifies being put into a time capsule or his ongoing A-list status? That is my problem with his agent, with all respect. Some heavy, heavy accusations levied at Paula Wagner. So, let me rebut your rebuttal. Counter rebuttal. (laughs) I would say, first of all, that Tom Cruise is not your typical Hollywood commodity. I would argue that Tom Cruise is quite possibly one of a kind in Hollywood. He's got great dramatic range, which is something that, as you've already pointed out, we've seen in some of his earlier work. And we've also seen him transition to an actor with great physical range, which we've seen in almost all of his movies, where he's doing some crazy stunt, whether it's, uh, you know, holding his breath for six minutes, skydiving out of a plane, or walking onto a, or ho- hanging onto a plane or w- scaling down Burj Khalifa. There's nothing in terms of stunts this man can't do on his own. In terms of choosing franchises and really making them his, its own, uh, his own, I would say that Tom Cruise really took on Mission Impossible back in 1996 and decided, hey, I want to make this my franchise and I really want to build it through and through. And we just, we've seen him do that for more than two decades now. He has, he took a, a fledgling or not fledgling, a struggling TV franchise that was more or less forgotten about, made it into a very successful high action, heart, uh, beating, uh, heart, you know, running, Uh, action uh, series in Mission Impossible. And then you would talk about Oblivion. Sure, that wasn't the best movie. I can agree with that. But I think we have to remember that the agent's job is also to make sure that her actor is cast in movies that fit Tom Cruise and that suit Tom Cruise. And let's look at Tom Cruise's recent filmography, right? Most of them tend to be action-heavy, light-to-medium sci-fi, and they're all memorable for the right reasons, not for the wrong reasons. But there have also been times where he's broken that mold to really showcase his dramatic chops, and we can I can think of no better example than Collateral, a movie where he went from being this likable flamboyantly, not flamboyant, but really, you know, gregarious character to being a very menacing villain. So much so that I could believe he would do all those things in real life if that's what he were uh, interested in doing. And in terms of not being cast in certain movies like Argo, those things are circumstance. I don't think that that's because he wasn't crying for them or just didn't get them or that he wasn't, you know, didn't want them. You know, we've seen him be in other biopics such as uh, American Made, which was a biopic based on the Colombian or maybe not Colum- yeah, the Colombian drug cartels. My point is that Tom Cruise has been cast relatively close to perfect in all the movies that he's decided to do, and that's because his agent knows him better than anybody else does. And in terms of where Tom Cruise goes from here and whether he's past his prime, I would argue to you, Ethan, 
that the best of Tom Cruise didn't happen in the early, in the mid 80s and the early 90s, I would say to you that the best of Tom Cruise is yet to come. Pete, Thank you very much. Pete, I just would like to point out one statement that you made, which I really, really would like to be true, but it's not. Mission Impossible, I agree, was a fledgling television franchise, yet it was an intellectual property nonetheless. And when you talk about that franchise, it is nowhere to be seen on any top 10 list of highest grossing franchises, despite Tom Cruise being behind it. Let me read these downward, some of which don't apply. MCU, of course, it's a huge franchise. Star Wars, of course, it's a science fiction different franchise. Harry Potter franchise. James Bond franchise. Spider-Man franchise. The X-Men franchise. The Fast and Furious franchise. Then you've got the Lord of the Rings franchise. DC franchise. Jurassic Park franchise. Batman franchise. Transformers franchise. Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, all more successful franchises than Mission Impossible for no good reason. Tom Cruise is equal or better than all of the other actors that have supported any of those franchises, yet Mission Impossible is nowhere to be seen on that list. Why? That is the question that I want him to ask his agent. And I don't think that there's an easy answer. I rest my case. Damning words. <laughs> I will counter that. And in my final statement, say that I agree with you. Whoa. I understand. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to see this coming. I feel, like, I feel like your client is trying to terminate your employment right now. How can you agree, agree with, with the prosecutor? You. That the Mission Impossible franchise and most of Tom Cruise's franchise uh, movies aren't in the top 10 of any box office list. But I would counter that by saying, I don't think Tom Cruise is really interested in necessarily being the guy with the number one movie on the box office list. If he were, believe you me, he could have been in any one of the Marvel movies he wanted to be in. I think he could easily go to Disney and say, I want to be in a Marvel movie. And I think they would be grateful to have someone of his acting caliber and his physical prowess. Don't you forget, he can do most of those stunts himself in it. I think Tom Cruise is more interested in being in movies that will be more memorable and more and be remembered for being fantastic and for being in movies where we think about how hard he's pushed himself to the limit. Think about all those movies you mentioned and all those franchises you mentioned. Are you honestly telling and forget about the box office receipts. Are you honestly telling me that you wouldn't put Mission Impossible and the stunts he's done as water cooler moments compared to any of the highlight movements we've seen in any of those movies. Name one franchise, sorry, name one highlight scene that we can think of from Pirates of the Caribbean that would compare to anything from Mission Impossible that you would compare to, or even Harry Potter. And I would dare even say some of the DC movies and some of the Marvel movies. I would gladly put any one of Tom Cruise's stunts compared to a fight sequence in uh, the MCU. I think that for Tom Cruise, box office is not an indicator of success. And that's why I think his, and I think his agent understands that. And that's why I think that his agent should continue doing the great work that she has for Tom Cruise. May I make a counter to your counter of the counter? No, the, the debate's over, man. <laughs> then we shall take this to the back alley offline. Yes, that's right. Let me just get my knuckle dusters out. <laughs> All right, Pete, you make good points. Let's let our listeners vote online on Twitter and tell us what they think of the job that Tom Cruise's agent, who I'm sure is a wonderful lady and obviously very successful, has been doing managing his career for nearly 40 years, right? 
Yes, that's right. I believe she's been with him from the very beginning, from what I've seen. I still think there's more to come. I think there are rumors, by the way, that Tom Cruise is de- not desperate, but there's been indication from his camp that he wants to be a part of the MCU. See, this is, I realize the debate is over, so this is a post, <laughs> post-debate post remark. This yep. is, this, in my opinion, is demeaning Tom Cruise. <clears throat> as popular as MCU is... As successful as Tom Cruise has been, why is he now trying to jump on this bandwagon as some third tier random superhero or villain or supporting character? The time for him to be an MCU was Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr., who took that entire MCU on his shoulders and built it up and stepped away. To now come in after it's grossed $22 billion and say, hey, this looks like fun. I'd like to attach my name to this. I think. I don't disagree with you. I think it's unnecessary, especially since he has Mission Impossible. If he has Mission Impossible, he should build Mission Impossible and say, this is my MCU. I'm going to see it through. And he's done a very good job with Mission Impossible. Now. I think the first three were kind of iffy, but after that, they've become very good movies. Yeah, so again, in principle, I don't disagree with you, but I would argue that now is actually for someone like Tom Cruise and for other A-list stars, now is actually the ideal time for them to jump onto the MCU bandwagon purely because we are now going we're now entering the phase where a tier superheroes are coming back. The X Men are going to be back in the MCU franchise. Fantastic Four is going to be back in the franchise. So yes, I would agree with you when you say like, why would you want Tom Cruise to be playing like I don't know Solar Flare or some? I, I'm just making these names up, or you know some weirdo superhero that no one has even heard of or is like a D tier or E tier character from some comic that no one has heard of. I would agree with you wholeheartedly. But if you tell me that Tom Cruise is coming back because he wants to be an again, totally random. I don't think this is actually going to happen, but Tom Cruise comes back and says, I'm going to be Magneto. That's an A tier villain, or I'm going to be professor oh. X. That's no. an A tier here. I, I think all the more, no, absolutely. If I were his agent, I would say, you cannot do that. There is already a Magneto. There's two Magnetos, and they are yeah. very strongly attached to that character. There is already a Professor X. Two Professor Xs strongly, strongly attached to that character. Tom Cruise is too big to lower himself to simply take a paycheck to be attached to a franchise that is $22 billion successful, that with or without him, it will make the same amount of money. If he's really dedicated to a franchise, he's hitched himself to Mission Impossible. He has to boost Mission Impossible and recruit some other people to start to take over for him as he's pushing 60 years old. He needs to make Mission Impossible amazing. That needs to be his franchise. Or maybe he goes and says, I'm going to be Ghost Rider, who's a stunt who's a stunt guy in the comics, as well as a superhero. That kind of fits into his personality as well. Look, I don't, again, I don't fundamentally disagree with the point you're trying to make about him want, jumping on the bandwagon or not. I, as a fan of the MCU, want to see as many of the guys that I really like in the MCU. Uh, but uh, anyway, to be determined, we'll see if I that mean, actually I, happens. I think These the other, rumors. I think the other thing Tom Cruise has the benefit of is that he should be, I don't want to say that he should be seeking out an Academy Award, but he has the acting chops. He's got the credibility. He's got the name recognition that he can take any story that he wants. It will be funded. It will be made. He can choose any story he wants to be whatever character he wants, whether it's a biopic, whether it's an indie, he has the ability to take anything and make a great character. And I, and I think that he should use that opportunity. He's already got Mission Impossible. Go make a few brilliant films 
that make people cry, that make people laugh, that make people cheer. Go be the people's champion. You've got that ability. Everybody knows your name. Any movie you put out, people will see it. Whether it's good or not is on you. But anything you take, no matter what the title, no matter what the synopsis, it will be in theaters. It will. People will go see it. And not many people in the world have that ability to take on any character or role that they want and, and you know, give it that, that platform. And I think he should take advantage of that. By going to MCU yeah. and playing Professor X, I'm just not sure what he looks to achieve. He's not going to be more popular. He's not going to get more endorsements. He's not making more money. Nothing is dramatically changing in his life. Unless he just wants more attention, fan adulation, go to Comic-Con and have more people cheer for him. But he can go to literally any city in the world for any premiere and he will have the same number of dudes cheering him, women throwing panties at him, same number of paparazzi snapping photos of him. I don't think he needs to go to MCU to get the affection if that's really what he's trying to achieve right now. Well, look, time will tell. I don't know whether that's actually true or not, whether he's going to be in the MCU. No. These were just rumors. No. If, if, I'm, if I'm someone like, I'm making up a name, Hugh Jackman, who's less than Hugh Jackman? Who's oh. less than Hugh like, Jackman? Like, give me, give me another name who's known, but not kind of like in a lot of stuff lately. Like, Hugh Jackman's a little bit Bradley Cooper. You know, like... Yeah, Bradley Cooper, uh, someone, Josh Hartnett. Josh Hartnett. You know, someone who's like, they're a name. I mean, a big name that everybody recognizes them, but they haven't really been in anything for a while. And it's Hayden not really... Hayden Christensen. Hayden Christensen. Even like kind of Owen Wilson. Like, what are they going to be in next? Are they on the short list for any film? Those are the folks, you know, like Owen Wilson joined uh, Loki, right? Loki, yeah. That's a good role for him because he's kind of done with rom-coms. I know he had Marry Me with, with J-Lo. He doesn't, he's not really doing those, you know, buddy uh, comedies anymore. Like, if you're kind of on the fringe of being forgotten in Hollywood, I think you do everything you can to try to attach yourself to MCU. If you're Tom Cruise and you can take any project you want, I'm not sure why you put yourself through that production schedule and kind of block your time for the next couple of years and limit what else you can do. Let's make this the last point, but I think it's a good way for him to get more relevant to a younger audience. Ah, that is potentially a winning argument. That That is potentially a winning argument, yeah. I think, you know, we, you know, you and I are not a special case, but represent yeah. a demographic who have been with Tom Cruise since 1986, yeah. right? People who were born in the late 90s, mid 90s, yeah. 2000s, even 2010s who are like teenagers now, they're probably a lot less interested in Tom Cruise than you and I are because at in our heyday we saw Tom Cruise fly a jet in Top Gun 1 and it blew our minds now it's you know how does he reach out to them Top Gun 2 isn't going to do it for them I have to say Pete that is that is potentially a winning argument but if you had to choose the franchise and the role what do you choose then okay you're his agent or you, you, for you, Tom, for uh, for Tom Cruise yeah, in what, the MCU, what it doesn't have to be MCU. You could put him in DC if you wanted, right? You could put him in right. Oh, okay, in a franchise like yeah. that. Oh man, you I could put know. him in Fast and Furious if you wanted. Where where would you put him? You could put him in Frozen. You could put him anywhere Jeez. you want. You know, honestly, you. I, I mean, I know we joke about it, but like, somewhat, if he were to go like and do a heel turn, a la Collateral, yeah, right. In something like the Fast and Furious franchise, yeah, and I'm being again specious. This is all off the top of my head. Yeah. I think that would really elevate the Fast and Fr yeah. Furious franchise, right? Because that would be like a very credible yeah. A-list star. Yes, yes. in playing uh, the villain, I yeah. think that's something that actually it would be one of the few cases where the franchise needs him more than he needs the franchise. Yeah. Would you Would you put him in if 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 you were his agent and he said, hey, 
I've got an offer to be in Deadpool. I'm going to swear a bunch and smoke and swear. Like, would you put him in Deadpool or would you say, no, no, no. I'm going to put you in (laughs) Spider-Man, you know? I think it'd be interesting to see him in a superhero franchise. I don't want to... I'd have to really think about what makes sense for him in it. I think something like, you know... uh, I, and I know I was saying it off the cuff, but something like Ghost Rider kind of makes sense because Tom Cruise is also known for being a stuntman in his professional career. You know what I mean? Like in the sense that he does his own stunts, yeah. not that he is a stuntman. And where and Ghost Rider is most famously known for his alt, his real world alter ego is that he's a stunt motorcycle driver. Uh, uh, you know, a la Evil Knievel. Um, but, you know, I don't think that in terms of profession, that kind of fits him. But in terms of personality, I don't think it does. Um, I'd have to think more about it. But there are a couple of elder statesman roles that he could maybe fit. Maybe something along the lines of... Uh, I don't know if he could do it. And I don't know if he's too old for it. Or if he's got the right look. But maybe Namor, the Submariner. That might be interesting. Because he's got that, he can be gruff if he wants to be. He can be standoffish if he wants to be. He can be the reluctant good guy. I mean, X, Professor, the thing about Professor X is that that kind of goes against everything that Tom Cruise is known for, which is doing his own stunts, being so physical. If you're going to put him as X, yeah, you can't leave the bound him to a, a right? chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that seems like it's opposite of what you want to portray with him you know i mean could it be the new batman where he's kind of a uh but he doesn't fit into the batman uh universe at all spider-man make a great bruce wayne he'd be an amazing bruce wayne Right, super yeah. charismatic, Ex- super smiley. Ex- He'd fit. He looks excellent in a tuxedo. Yeah. He looks like he's a million bucks yeah. walking. Yeah, uh, but w- as the Cape Crusader, no, I don't think he's dark enough for that. Yeah, I mean, and that ship has sailed now, right? So yeah, 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 and exactly. I don't uh, even want to entertain that discussion because I think Pattinson did a really good job. Yeah, I mean, X Men. Where would he fit in X Men? Again, like he's not. Really it's too either. hard for X Men because they're all supposed to be young guys. Yeah. He wouldn't be able to be any of the X Men, yeah. right? Uh, you'd want him to be someone a little older. There's probably some guys out there that I haven't thought of, but yes, there's definitely. I'd have to think about it. He could be uh, Victor Von Doom. He could be Doctor Doom. Yeah. Right. He could play. I think it'd be interesting to see him play a bad guy in the universe, not a good guy. Yeah, it can be a bad guy, but it has to be a recurring role bad guy. It can't just yeah. I, I, you know, Again, like Victor Von Doom, I because I really think that Doom could be the main bad guy for all of X Men, uh, all yeah. of the MCU, a la Thanos in the first three phases. Yeah. Uh anyway, no easy solutions to be honest. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. But in any case, Ethan, that was a good debate. That was a Thank little extended Pete. from what we usually do, but I like it. Way to keep it civil. That's <laughs> always, always. <laughs> Reach out whether you think Tom Cruise's agent should be fired uh, on Twitter at F and S podcast. Let us know what you think and whether he, uh, whether Ethan is right or whether I am right. Promoted or demoted. Thumbs up, thumbs down. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening to another episode of Films and Stuff. If you haven't already, please subscribe and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever podcasts are downloaded. Films and Stuff. There is no substitute.